The first base of Mikdash era, think about Shlomo HaMelech. That was the golden age of the Jewish people. Everybody was rich. Everybody was smart. Everybody had a hundred wives. I, I don't know what that means, but like, it was like, that one, I'm like, let's bring that one back, right? I just found out that Shlomo HaMelech had 700 wives. I was like, wait a second. But there was this concept where there was everything was flowing. It was pulsing with Hashem. You had a question, you didn't go to a doctor, you went to the Navi. They were Nevi'im walking around all day. There was Hogwarts schools for Nevi'im. There were people like learning Torah. It was the closest we could have gotten to Hashem. It's like the Queen of Sheba came to visit Shalom, Shalom HaMelech. Why is that? It's because the Machas of Asilas was emanating in this world via the world of Asiya, looking like it was natural, pretending it was natural, and it was totally not natural. It was supernatural, okay? Then came the second Mesa Mikdash period. What do we know in the second Mesa Mikdash? Was Hashem's presence still there? Yes, but not as much. So what does that mean? What happened during the second Mesa Mikdash? What, what, like what miracle happened during the second Mesa Mikdash? Hanukkah. It's Hanukkah. Could you pair, can compare Hanukkah to like any degree of Pesach? Of like Pesach I associate with like first Mesa Mikdash era, right? Like literally like Mako splitting seas. Hanukkah was a miracle, right? There was a miracle. I'm not downplaying the miracle, but it was of the lowest miracles because it could have been natural. Obviously the oil was supernatural, whatever, but like the level of Navua, who was the last Navi? What? Daniel, right? And Daniel, when did Daniel live? Daniel was in Bavel, right? Daniel was in Bavel, and he prophesied about the second Mesa Mikdash. He already, that, right, that was like that, that Purim, the story of Purim was like the in-between the first Mesa Mikdash and the second Mesa Mikdash, right? Think about it. Purim was, Purim was also like a little bit Hester because Purim was outside already of the first, of the first Mesa Mikdash era. Then we went to Hanukkah, which was even a little bit more of a natural time. That whole era, the second Mesa Mikdash, there was no Nevi'im. There was a, a, a fire. Think about it. I remember this story also. I'm, I can't verify it, but maybe Shifra, you would know this. Like, it says that like the Kohen Gadol would die every year on Yom Kippur. Is that yeah. true? Yeah, that's a, they, they used to like pull him yeah. out, right? During the first base, I gosh, there was always, we were always forgiven. It was always Sa'ir La Zazel, Sa'ir La Chatas. I think so, right? Like, I know you said I could say anything, but I'm not sure how much I could say. Um, <laughs> The, that era, the second Mesa Mikdash, it wasn't as pure and it wasn't as clear because Hashem took every single stop. Hashem took the local train to the city. So Hashem went from the Chabad of Atzilas and settled in the Malchus of Atzilas. <coughs> then he went from the Chabad of, of Bria and he settled in there. And he kept stopping and stopping and stopping. And because of all those stops, the presence of Hashem was still there, but it wasn't as concentrated and it wasn't as heavy and it wasn't as free flowing and it wasn't as miraculous as it because there was layers of concealment. We were behind many layers of the curtains. In this sense, we can understand a little bit about how this relates to us, okay? Think about us as a world, okay? Think about the way that we're created. Our, our body, our brain is not more alive than our toe, but why is our brain the headquarters? We're saying the Kodesh HaKadoshim is not more holy than anything else. It's just the headquarters. Why was the Kodesh HaKadoshim so important? What did it house that we knew that it was a more concentrated form? What was in there? Shina. The Shekhinah. Where was the Shekhinah resting and what seat was it resting? In the Kruvim, right? Inside the Aru. Remember we said in the beginning, you would think, oh, the Shekhinah, it goes into my Neshama. It goes into my soul. It goes right over here. We always think our Neshama is here. Guess what? We're learning now in Tanya that our Neshama is up here. That the soul power comes from here. Everything emanates from here. Hashem starts off over here. I always think about like the brain like pulsing, right? Don't touch the baby's head, right? You know, like they're, did it close up? I'm like, what? Closing up? Like come out of the, you know, come out fully formed, but it's not. It's still there. And Hashem's willpower starts over here. It emanates over here. And then when the power, when the life force of our neshama goes into our eyes, it manifests as sight. And when Hashem's soul power goes into our ears, it manifests as hearing. And when the soul power comes through our body and goes down to our legs, it manifests as mobility. So it's all Hashem's power is within us. The question is, where is it concentrated? Where is it starting? Where is it flowing from? Where's the HQ? We call it the headquarters, right? When somebody loses so much oxygen, we say they're brain dead. What does that mean? Why do we say brain? We don't say toe dead. Like, okay, so you amputate your toe, right? Like, you know, but it's not because brain, the brain connotates something else. Inside the brain is all the will, all the rut zone, all the life forces there. The whole reason to live is in the brain, right? Like when we learn in like neurology, like I'm trying to remember which psych class it was, like the neurotransmitters class, right? Like Bio what? Biopsych. Biopsych, yes, thank you. Biopsych, right? Um, we had the same teacher. No, didn't we in Toro? 
There was that one teacher who gave away all the answers. Yeah. No, it, he died, right? Okay, I'm so sorry he died. But he taught about this concept of neurotransmitters, that at a certain place when your body has to send messages for, it, for the brain to do everything, the brain knows everything. I don't know if the toe knows everything. I don't know if the fingers know everything. My, the life force of Hashem is presence in my fingers, but it's not like the brain knows. The brain knows everything. The brain knows send messages to the hand to draw away from the fire. It's still connected. It's still connected, right. It's sensory and also more, I mean, right. Neuroanatomy, neurophysiology, now they're learning much more and more and more. Also, neuroscience, like everything that's coming out in science now, is this everything? Really? Everything. Yeah. Look who come in. You also like to sit outside. I know. Wait, can you tell me more? Like in what sense? No, in terms like, of how the control of like all the different like first of all the different parts of the brain, and then also right. how it. I don't. There's there's some healthcare. Care, but, um, <laughs> no, the way that the brain and the, the brain everything is coming from the brain, brain right? Course, <clears throat> everything from, comes through there, and right. there's there's a motor pathway and a sensory pathway. So to the pinky finger, right, or toe, or whatever, and it has to be connected in order for the brain for to the brain to go back, right? <laughs> Like one of the sad things about my father when he had Parkinson's, and my father was very smart, he diagnosed himself, he said that the brain just stops sending messages to your body to do things. I'm like, Ty, how do you figure out how to walk? Like, why are you shuffling? Like, pick up your foot. And he's like, those neurotransmitters got frayed. Like, they're not getting the messages from the brain. So it's a, ultimately, it's like, with everything comes from the brain. Okay, so now do we understand this a little bit more, this flow of it and how it culminates in Malchus? Even if we don't understand it, we'll just go with this concept one step further, okay? First base of Mikdash, it was so clear. We saw Hashem in everything because the Malchus of Atzilas was literally shining through this world, okay? But what do we know now? The second base of Mikdash, it was here, but why was it less present? Why were there not as many Nevi'im? Because it had to go through stages and it went through layers and layers and layers, so it just took a little bit longer and then by the time it got to this world, it was with a little bit more of a natural twist. Like, like, I could do things by myself, it's okay. First base of Mekdash, boom, Hashem is everywhere. That's why, by the way, the third base of Mekdash is going to be the ultimate, because it's going to be the machas of Atzilos, but it's going to be able to catch all the things, so it's going to look natural, but it's not going to feel natural, it's going to be everything, right? That's why we're always diving for the base of Mekdash. Now let's think about it. Now that we know that the the top, the, our brain, the Kodesh Kedashim, is the HQ, is the headquarters, let's understand this from a concept of our world, Okay. What do we know about our world right now, in 2024? What are we missing? A lot. We don't, we're missing. don't see anything. We don't see anything. Why? Why don't we see anything? Trillions because of layers. Trillions of layers, okay? 100% trillions of layers. What else? What's even more so? What's even sadder? Nevoah is missing. is missing, right? Even the saddest, like what we dive in for on Tishbet. Oh, we don't have a base mikdash, right? So it's like everyone's like, he's so big, so we don't have a base mikdash. Okay, we have the IDF, and like we have this. I'm like, the dwelling place. Oh, exactly. So what happens when there's no dwelling place? He's walking and can't rest. Right? So what do we have to do, right? Bring it and make a dwelling place. What's the words? Tiyar b'tachtonim. It's like all of a sudden it clicks. It's like I have no idea what you were just talking about for the last 35 minutes, but now it's like, oh my goodness, that resting place. It's, it's not anywhere. It's something that we actually have to create. So it's like, oh my gosh, now all of Tanya just starts to make sense. Instead of having a Besamikdash, a place for it to rest, instead of having a Machas for it to rest in, we now become Machas. We now have to make ourselves the vessel, okay? So what do we do have, though? What do we have? We don't have the Besamikdash, but we have what? We have Tamidech HaChamim, 100%. Tefillah. The Torah, the Torah. What's the Torah? The Torah, Torah is what? Chachma. Think about what's the vessel that catches the Malchus from the previous world? I know this makes no sense because I have no idea what this means, flowing vessels catching. But what? The Chachma. The Chachma always catches from the previous world, right? Hashem develops in Chachma and then, I mean, developed this world through Chachma of Atzilas, went down to Malchus, went then into the next world of Chachma, then went down all the way to Malchus. Chachma all the way down here. What's happening now without the Beit HaMikdash is that the Chachma of Atzilas goes into the Chachma of Bria, goes into the Chachma of Asiya, uh, of Yetzirah, and then settles in the Chachma of this world, which is Asiya. 
Think about the difference between the first base of Mekdash and the second base of Mekdash. Besides the fact that there were miracles, the things that, the Torah that we were living, the world that we were living, and we said this a few times, the first base of Mekdash era was larger than life. It was Torah Shebech Sav. It was miracles. It was crazy stories with the Plishtim and Shimshon and bringing down pillars and wars being won and Kuzbi and Zimri killing people. Like it was, like I would say, like Lahavza was like Game of Thrones. It was this different, larger than life era of being able to see Hashem in everything. And that was the Torah of that era was Torah Shabbal Pet, Torah Shabbat Sav. And then we went into a world of Torah Shabbal Pet. And what did we say? We went into a world of Gemara, Rashi, Taisfus, Ramban, everything that you prep to go to seminary. Like I still remember I went to my seminary interview and like Rabbi Geyser was like, read the Malbim and tell me the three questions. And I'm like, I read it. I'm like, I looked up at it. I'm like, I don't even know one. <laughs> like, I don't know it. Like, this was too hard for me. Like, I haven't read Rashi letters in a very long time. Like, I forgot what that is. You ever tried to read Rashi letters recently? It's like, whoa. No, it's like the f letters are so different. But we live in a world of Torah about pet. We live in a world of, we said, we said this. Let's see who remembers this. This is like making me so nostalgic. We said this concept where like, in Hashkin Ashura, like in, in this day and age, Ella Bedal Ramos shall. Hashem only rests in the four. Yes. What does that mean? It means that, like, let's say, I remember what people were saying. Like, why I'm like getting like so happy. Now? I have like such nachas. Right. Why, why do we, we have to like, why do we have to learn tomorrow about like these random things? Because obviously, if Hashem wants us to know it, then we have to, oh, we don't understand why we have to know about cows. But it's because Hashem put it for us there. That's like us feeling the presence of Hashem. That so, ha yes. So, ha that was so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Like, how do I tap into Hashem? If I don't have a Malchus, if I don't have a Besa Mikdash, what do I do? I have to go back to the Chachma because Hashem is only going from Chachma to Chachma to Chachma. He doesn't have anywhere to rest. Where does he rest? He rests in Chachma. He rests in Halacha. So, we're saying, why do we need to have Hachashavah share? Why do we need to learn Halacha? Okay, why do I need to learn about cows and like paying people back? It so doesn't even make sense. There's no, I don't have anything tangible for me to even think about it. I don't have cows. Nobody's stealing my cows. Nobody poked my co my cow's eye out. But why am I learning this? Because that's where the Shechina is. Right now, the Shechina doesn't have a house. So we say, Vasuli Mikdash Vishachanti Vishacham. Hashem said, make me a Mikdash. Why is there a whole separate mitzvah about building a base HaMikdash? There's no separate mitzvah on like how to make Shabbos in your house. Like, okay, we are to put challahs in, whatever. We learn about the base of like it's so real because we have to know for ourselves, we have to make ourselves a base of And until we make that self a base of mikdash, where do we find Hashem? In the chachma of every single world. So all in halacha. All, that was the second era of the base of The whole base of mikdash, the second era of base of second base mikdash, that whole era was a world of halacha. It was a world where we got sent to Bava, where we wrote Talmud Bavli, where we wrote Talmud Yerushalmi, Mishnayis, Rashi, Rashi, all these types of us, everything was during the Crusades. Like, what's happening here? The, the, like, literally, if you think about it, the world that we're living in is a very concealed world. But you can find Hashem in the Dalai Lama's halacha. You could find Hashem in Chabad, in Chachma Bin Adas. You could find it. Because we know, we know your brain rules over your heart. So we know that if I concentrate it here and I do everything I need to do up here, and if I make myself a cleat to catch it, then I'm good. Why are we good? Because now my body is a base of mikdash. Okay, now I understand why I have to dress me yes, because my body is base of mikdash, right? Like, you know? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to bring it there, but like, I just have to. But this idea, it's so much deeper. It's so much deeper knowing that when you tap into creating your own malchus, you then become a resting place of Hashem. <laughs> and now let's bring it back to Tanya. Now let's go back full circle, okay? Let's talk about the fire and the oil and the wick. What do we say? What was the fuel? What was the fuel? The mitzvahs. What does fuel look like? What does oil look like? Oil, oil always represents what? I think Hanukkah. What does oil represent? Oil always rises. You make a salad dressing. You shake it up. Papa seeds and everything else falls to the bottom. Remember that Papa seed dressing? It's like that salad dressing that was going around, with like strawberries. And also, like, everyone's like, you put poppy seeds in dressing? It was like, now it's like nutritional yeast. Like, now I have to put that in. But, like, back in the day, I remember being poppy seeds. And that would go to the bottom. The oil goes to the top, right? You shake it, and then it doesn't matter. It always flows to the top. What the Hashemunam were trying to do, what were they trying to do? Diminish what? Our neshamas, our das, our chachma. Your chachma is the same thing as our chachma. I promise you. Your chachma, don't worry. Not misnagdim. What was the word? Um, 
Misyavnim, right? Like, I was always like so confused. Like, people converted? Like, in that day? Like, you literally had to be some Mikdash because they were just dumbing down our wisdom, saying it's your wisdom, the same thing.